everybody. Today is Sunday, August 20th, 2017. A little after 2.30 in the afternoon. Yep, it's official. Just 24 hours ago until the solar eclipse nears totality. I fear today I'm going to talk about my plans for covering the eclipse on CubeComp MTDX. As you sit in the yard, I have the weather case camera going. Now, the reason why I have it going now is because I'm actually doing some testing with it. I plan to have the weather case camera out, and I plan to have the play touch here on the porch recording. I'm not going to actually be here. I'll be down at Central Piedmont Community College. And I've seen so many eclipse videos on YouTube where when the sun gets blacked out by the moon, it sounds like a touchdown at a football game. Lots of, woo, woo. I don't need that. Be honest, I would rather get to listen to the natural sounds that you may hear, such as the birds getting quiet, the cicadas changing tune, you know, things like that. There are not many videos on YouTube where you get to witness the eclipse without it sounding like a touchdown at a football game. And we got a fire ant nest here. Or did. So anyways, there's where the sun is right now. So I have to keep this in mind when I position my weather case camera tomorrow. But the reason why I have it out today is because I just got me another 32 gigabyte memory card. And I have two of the LG Chem 2200 milliamp hour lithium ion cells loaded into it. This will see how long it records. I also want to see if it can go without having any sort of overheating issues. When I recently, um, let's see, about a couple years ago or so, I did some improvements to the weather case to try to alleviate camera overheating due to sunlight. I mean, this thing used to be like a little greenhouse um, before I had all this reflective tape on there, this metal tape. This thing used to be like a little greenhouse to where it would get so hot that, of course, my, the camera I had in there at the time had lots of hot glue holding things together, like, for example, the microphone jack. It would just melt plumb off, and sometimes the camera would just shut off because it overheats. So what I did is I added some cardboard here, and I also wrapped this entire thing except for this little spot right there with aluminum tape so instead of all the sunlight entering this thing what happens now is it gets reflected back and this tape tends to absorb more of the sun the sun's heat and the most recent thing I've done today is um, so I had this cover on here to try to keep um, to try to keep water from getting into the microphone but I decided to knock a hole in it right here and I tapped a hole in this um, lid so that way air can enter inside the weather case while the camera's going. Try to help and get some air circulation there to try to help keep things a little cooler. I'm gonna pop this off here see how warm it is in there. It is in fact pretty hot. But it's been it's been going for 21 minutes now. Um, now the ZI6 is a pretty hot running camera to begin with. Um, I mean, it just, the ZI6 cameras they get they get very hot. Um, not that's something I don't really like about them. The DXG567V, which is very similar to this camera, had the same kind of problem. Um, this camera gets so hot that the memory cards, the labels on the memory cards start to bubble up over time. Yeah, it gets that hot. Um, now perhaps what I could do is I could get me a little something to hold this to the side. I might use some duct tape or packaging tape or something to just hold it to the side and just keep this whole back off. Um, even if it does come a thunderstorm it should be okay. But then again, you never really know. I mean, 
the way that the winds could blow, it could it could cause some issues. You could get some water in there. And I think there is a slight, well, I think there's a slight chance of storms tomorrow. I'll have to look at the radar and see. Well, the, the forecast radar. But I just want to see how this camera does today with direct sunlight. I want to see if it manages to go okay without overheating or freezing or things like that. And you can see how this tape is reflecting a lot of light back off the case. And like I mentioned, it's pretty. the camera is pretty toasty, but um, inside the case is actually not too bad. Like I mentioned, it used to get a lot hotter inside there before I did this recent modification where I added the tape to the weather case. Okay, so anyways, I plan to have two cameras going here. And of course, I'll be at CPCC tomorrow. And I plan to get some coverage of the eclipse when it happens. Of course, I'll be, I won't be able to take a whole lot of time off because I'll be, of course, working. But I'll see what I can do. I do plan to be on break when this eclipse happens when we get to the point of totality which in this area it will be 95 to 97 percent I think it won't be 100 percent um, like it's going to be in South Carolina tomorrow but um, it's going to be pretty close and of course this might be you never know this might be the only I don't know exactly when the next eclipse is supposed to happen here I know the U.S. is supposed to get another one, but it won't be quite in this area. So I don't know when the next one will happen, if it will happen during my lifetime. So that's kind of, it's a, it's a pretty significant thing. So the forecast for tomorrow is supposed to be um, 88 degrees. I'm going to go ahead and refresh this. This is actually an older forecast. 88 degrees tomorrow. 10% chance of um, rain, so and 10% chance that evening. So I should be safe to just run the weather case camera with the back off. I can, I'm going to have to tape it to the side because, of course, the microphone is built into the back of the case. This one try to be able to run this thing without it, over, without it overheating. Let's also, of course, not forget about the pinhole projector I built a couple days ago. I'll have this with me and just for example if you hadn't seen how it works yet um, I can demonstrate that since we had the Sun practically right over us right now if you can see there you go that little that little speck there that's the Sun I can probably zoom in on it make it look a little better see that right there is actually the Sun and what I'm going to do is I'm going to step behind a tree. And you'll see what happens here. As you can see, you can see the shadow of the tree limbs. as I pass under them and you can see how well you're not I don't know if you can actually tell in video but everything essentially moves backwards to the actual direction of movement simply that's the way cameras work this is essentially a, like a pinhole camera think of the paper in the back as your film Because, because of course we know how dangerous it is to look directly at the sun. Of course, I'm not looking directly at the sun. The camera is, though. And that's another thing I'm a little bit concerned about. Is I know for a fact the ZI6 does have a UV filter built into its lens. So it should be blocking out the UV rays, but... Hope for sure that the thing does not get damaged. 
We've been going for about half an hour now. Um, I believe this should go for about five to six hours. I'll be leaving here tomorrow at about 1030. So the actual eclipse will be happening roughly four hours after I actually... Well, the, the, the point of totality will actually occur roughly four hours after I start the camera. So hopefully we can get five hours out of it. Being at least had this one going long enough to get the eclipse. Now the play touch camera, I know for a fact that it will go for a roughly eight and a half hours on the 3000 milliamp hour batteries and a 32 gig card. As a matter of fact, the card fills up before the batteries go dead. So yeah, it's safe to say it'll be a very interesting thing <laughs> to witness. And hopefully both my cameras hold up here. I know the play touch should be fine, but the weather case one's one I'm a little concerned about. Hopefully it won't freeze up or anything like that. Okay, so I went ahead and moved the ZI6 camera over to the spot where it will be tomorrow to capture the solar eclipse. It's back here now. Decided to place it right here so that way the noise of the air conditioner won't be so loud. What I've done is I relaxed the back leg on the tripod and secured the front two legs like I would in a thunderstorm. Well, normally I would secure all three, but I relaxed the back leg of the tripod to lean it back a good bit so that way when I turn this back all the way, the camera now looks directly up at the sun. And I went ahead and also, as you might be able to tell, I did go ahead and just take this back cover off of here. It's the only thing I don't like about the new setup I have with my weather case is the microphone is not removable. It's, it's built in. The reason why I did this is because I kept having issues with the jack not getting a good connection and thus ruining videos with crappy sounding audio. So what I did is I just went and secured this lid to the tripod with packaging tape and we've been going for about 50 minutes now and the camera is just looking directly at the sun again as I mentioned the ZI6 does in fact have a UV filter built in and I'm just looking with my eyes at the LCD of my camera so I'm not looking at the sun yeah guys it's very dangerous to look directly at the sun you could do some serious harm to your eyes real quickly which is why I have built the pinhole viewer because I don't have any Eclipse glasses. Everybody wants too much money for them now. Now I do know for a fact that um, Central Piedmont Community College are actually having an event tomorrow for the Eclipse and they're going to be passing out free Eclipse glasses while supplies last. Now you gotta understand the sheer number of students down there. <laughs> and of course I'm going to give the students priority as far as who gets the glasses first. So anyways, again we've been going for quite some time now. Close to an hour. I'm also going to see how long this thing will go for. Hopefully it'll go for six hours, or at least five hours. Get a good, I want, I want to at least get the part where the sun goes, where the sun gets blocked completely. On this on this video camera, the play touch will be on the porch and will be there to time lapse the entire thing out. So yeah, guys, I plan on time lapsing this whole thing, um, which I think will be quite interesting because the eclipse actually starts here. I guess about one or one thirty. That's when the moon starts to pass in front of the sun, and it's not until about what two fifteen to two thirty where. You get the totality, which here will be, it'll not actually be 100%, it'll be like 96 or 97%, like I mentioned earlier. 
Yeah. Safe to say that CubeComp MTDX is, is prepared. We'll just see how this camera here does this evening. Hopefully it doesn't overheat and hopefully it doesn't freeze up. And hopefully it, it gets a good bit of record time in with that 32 gigabyte card. It's just a wait and see kind of thing. Yeah guys, this is my these are my plans for tomorrow. And I hope to get the video footage up as soon as I can. Anyways, stay tuned.